Hi guys, and welcome to another Kit Review. Okay, so today we're having a look at this beastie. It is a German Sturmpager. The 38cm assault mortar, which is that thing there. Okay, this is from Tamiya in 135 scale. Okay, now this kit came out in 1994. And is still an ongoing reissue. Alright, so it's a very impressive kit. Okay, it has individual track links, a basic interior, including, if I remember rightly, four 38 centimeter um, shells, okay, plus a crew figure. All right, so standard Tamiya cover art, beautiful big color painting of the actual Stern Tiger on a white background, okay. So, very impressive. These beasties were very, very impressive. Okay, so that's the cover. Let's have a look at the sides of the box. All right, so on the side you'll see the Sturmpager, three views, standard all over dark yellow, red brown, dark green camouflage, plus it is in amb ambush pattern. So ambush pattern could be um, dots or dashes or almost anything that just to break up the profile of these large color blotches. Okay, so that's what's on that side. This, I believe, is possibly the uh, specifications. I believe it is in Japanese, and I don't read Japanese, so... I can't tell you exactly what it says, but I can see it says 38 centimeters. So it obviously is basic specifications and history of the vehicle. On the other side, same again. So this shows you a cutout of the interior that you will get in this kit. The shell's inside. Okay. This is the shell hoist. Another couple of views of the vehicle. Plus, this is comparison of the rocket and a crew figure so these were big beasties these rockets massive things that's just why they needed a crane to pick them up and put them inside okay so that's the box we'll turn this beast around and let's have a look inside okay so this kit i believe i got quite a while back um I believe it was relatively cheap at the time, so, you know, got to pick up bargains as you can. So, as you can see, instructions, we'll have a look at those shortly. I did buy these, and I will show them to you. This is, okay, an aftermarket Zimmerit coating, okay, water slide decal. All right, Sturm Targets did have Zimmerit. Uh, I believe there is no Zimmerit on this actual tank all right so i'll put those aside and let's have a look so first up these are the rockets this is the back of the tank engine deck etc okay so that's the first bag out and this is a big box there is a lot in it this is a big tank as you can see this is the main fighting compartment the actual gun itself all right mantlet very basic decals and a few other bits and pieces including your crew member next one out we'll have a look at is the actual bottom of the hull with some very outstanding bolt detail on that then we have got two sprues exactly the same which is your tri sprocket, idle wheel, running wheels, etc. And then your, so you've got three sprues in here. These are your individual track links. All right, so you will get a really nice um, track sag with these individual links. All right, and that's what's in the box. So literally not too much. Four sprues, three track sprues, and the 
lower hull. Okay, put that aside in a second. We'll have a look at the instructions and the decals. Okay, so let's have a look at the instructions. All right, first up, just a repeat of the cover art showing the figure. Actually, it's not a repeat of the cover art. My bad, it's actually the model itself. And in four different languages, Japanese, French, German, and English. Okay, this is a brief history with some specifications for the Stone Tiger itself, how many shells it could carry, which is literally only 14, what it was used for. So basically, this vehicle was designed to destroy bunkers, um, other kind of heavy emplacements. This thing could probably level an entire city block. They did use these, at least one of these, um, in the Warsaw Uprising to put the uprising down. All right, I have seen film on YouTube of one of these firing rockets into Warsaw. So they were used, not that many were built. They were a heavy beast, and as usual, based on the Tiger chassis, with the same Tiger problems. Okay, so, let's have a look at the instructions. So, there is no sprue layout, which is kind of normal for Tamiya. You get your basic paint chart, well, paint call-outs, I should say. All Tamiya colours, recommended tools, etc. So remembering this is a 94 kit, so the instructions are kind of a hybrid between new style and the old classic style. First up, torsion bars go into the lower hull, sides go on and the back goes on. Then you put the wheels on, okay, so if you read the instructions carefully you will not have a problem putting the wheels on. Now note that it does specify in these greyed out areas Zimmerit okay this is where the Zimmerit was applied to this vehicle which is why I bought the aftermarket Zimmerit put that on first um, I recommend to anyone who buys this kit definitely source an aftermarket Zimmerit kit uh, it will definitely enhance the model okay so, you've got your drive sprocket, your road wheels, your idler wheel, okay. Just following the instructions shows you exactly as this is a interleaved pattern tiger chassis. You will have to be careful how you set the wheels out, but you shouldn't have a problem. There's a Tamiya kit after all. Okay, then you've just got, this is the front panel. The good thing about Tamiya is it does actually tell you what these things are. This is the loading tray for the shells. Then you put the individual track links together and these in theory will just... Um, no, I don't think these will. I believe these will have to be... Yes, you'll have to glue these tracks together unfortunately. So that's a bit of a bummer but it is what it is. Okay. So, it does explain how the tracks go. It does explain how they sit on the wheels. So, read the instructions carefully before you glue any of the tracks or anything together. Take your time. My recommendation. So, then we carry on. Step 8. Exhaust pipes. Armoured covers the exhaust pipes. Rear mud guards. Jack and fittings going on. Okay, fairly straightforward, very similar to a Tiger tank. Rear engine deck. Okay. The only thing I didn't get with this is um, rear engine deck grills. That will be my next purchase for this Tiger. Sturm Tiger, I should say. We'll have to have a look out for those. Okay, and then we carry on with... Now this does have a very basic interior. As you can see, this is your floor interior. 
those are your loading rack for the rockets you got a driver's seat kind of and then ammunition racks for the actual rockets themselves okay so that all goes inside before you put the top of the hull on you do get uh, four rockets with okay it does tell you what color to paint them and you do get decals to put on the rockets as well okay so that's a little bit more detail really nice it means you can have the hatch open and see the basic interior if you want to upgrade the interior a bit you'll have to use your internet references okay engine deck goes on there is no engine in this by the way and then we get to the main gun mantlet okay so hatch main gun mantlet how the outer ring goes on and then we just carry on with building the mantlet you do get some nuts and bolts because they are a metal screw these are what your um, gun barrel itself hinges on when it's all set up so outer inner etc so read these instruction part very carefully including all the painting details and then the whole thing goes into the well onto I should say the upper hull from inside so at this stage once you've got all the inner fittings done you'd want to paint that inside bit otherwise you'll never see it again okay as you can see you do have hatches this is the loading hatch for the actual rockets all right so in the top so you could leave that open if you wanted to you may have to detail it a little bit more but at least you'll be able to see the interior with the rockets okay and then we just carry on putting on rear hatch aerial points hooks and things on the outside for your tools and spare track and what have you okay then the fighting compartment gets mounted on the hull mud guards at this point here the side skirts that point there um, that's where you would probably want to paint underneath before you put that on just so you don't miss it okay and that's basically it you've got your crane that goes on the back here to lift the uh, rockets off the ammunition truck etc put them inside and that's it there's not a great deal of number of steps to this 24 steps and she's just about all done okay so that's the instructions you'll notice there's no painting instructions with this main section that's because Tamiya gives you a separate one decoration of the stone tiger so decals painting tells you how to paint the crew member and on the other side this is the painting for the tiger so like I said all over dark yellow red brown dark green wavy camouflage shows you where to put your markings etc it does mention here about zimmerit coating okay okay so it does say you use polyester putty show it tells you how to apply the zimmerit um, if you're not confident in doing your own definitely go for an aftermarket all right so that's your painting instructions markings and painting for one vehicle only let's have a look at the decals very basic decals okay very basic two crosses these six here these here they are the markings for the actual rockets there are no other markings for the actual vehicle itself no unit markings no number nothing so if you're going to definitely internet references for markings of stern in the field 
Okay, so fairly straightforward, fairly easy. The only other thing I'll show you here is those, which you really don't need to see. These are the bolts and screws for the gun mantlet to operate. Okay, in a second, we will have a look at the sprues. Okay, so let's have a look at the sprues, but first I will show you the aftermarket Zimrit kit I got for this. And you must forgive me, but I was actually wrong. This kit does actually include the PE engine grills. Right, it shows you how long it's been since I had a look at this kit. So this one is by Def Model. It is specifically for the 135th scale Tamiya Sturm Tiger, not the AFE Club. Okay, these are decals, right? S standard water slide. So no glue required. It's a water slide decal. All right. This does explain to you exactly where they go, where all the parts go. So it is quite easy. And explains you how to cut the decal. All right, so that's the instructions. And these are the decals. All right, so this is a water slide. Even so, it does have, and I don't know if you can see that because it is quite shiny, it does actually have texture. Okay, which is exactly what you need. So that's fairly comprehensive and covers the whole Sturm Tiger as far up. So the, the Zimrit paste didn't go that far up the, the Sturm Tiger, just the lower parts were covered. And also included, which I forgot all completely about, the engine grill kit. Okay, so this came as one. So definitely the cheaper option. Get yourself a Zimrit aftermarket and keep an eye out for this one because you do get the engine grills that go with it. Okay, so that's the aftermarkets for this one. Let's have a look at the actual kit. I think we'll start with the bottom. Okay, so this is the bottom. I'll just point this out. It does have a molding point in the middle. Some basic couple of hatches on the bottom, but apart from that, not much. This is a 94 kit, so I'm not expecting miracles. Okay, it does say there, Sturm Tiger, which is unusual. Unusual piece of marking. It just says MM Sturm Tiger. It does have some detail here, but this is all covered by the wheels anyway. So I wouldn't really worry too much, but if you are going to weather it, okay, I would definitely leave the um, mud guards off till you've weathered inside. Okay, basic detail. Some very heavy bolts, but I believe that the Sturm Taker did have, oh, that went blurry, sorry guys, some very heavy bolt detail. Okay, and that's it. These are your attachment points for the side scoots, by the way. Not much to the lower hull. Not much at all. Okay, so let's have a look at the first big sprue out. And there are just, like I said, four main sprues plus three track sprues. Okay, so this bit is already broken off. That's it. As you can see, that's your gun barrel, fighting compartment, your crew. Okay, these are your gun mantlet, gun swivels. All right, this, so basically these are your fittings for the hatches, the gun, mud guards, etc. And that is your hoist 
goes on the back of the Stern Tiger for the rocket shells. Okay, so let's have a close look. I'll just put that aside. There's not much detail on that to see anyway. So there's your Stern Tiger. There is a, I don't know if you can see, possibly better in the close-ups. There is a cast detail and some very faint, come on focus, shallow weld lines. Okay. So there is some really nice detail. If you were thinking about enhancing that the weld lines I would definitely check my um, internet references okay let's turn this around so there's your crew member missing an arm and a head because that's where his head is details not too bad on him there's some nice detail on the mud guards let's have a look at the Okay, so there's really no cast detail that I can feel on the machine gun. Um, I don't know what you would call that now. Pod, I guess. Correct me if I'm wrong. I'm pretty sure I was wrong on that. So you might want to have a look and see if there's actually supposed to be cast detail on that. That's your crane. And other fittings for tools, etc., on the side of the Stern Tiger. So, detail wise, I think it would be impressive, but I would definitely check to see the cast texture on the actual tank if you can get some really nice photos of that, see if it matches to the model. Okay, so that's. One of the main screws. The next one is this one which is, as you can see, interior floor, engine deck, rear of the tank. These are your rocket shells. These are your ammo racks, jack, more ammo racks, fittings like um, rear mud guards, etc. So let's have a look, see. So, there is your back of your shell. Really nice detail. However, of course, you won't see it once it's actually inside. So, possibly leaving a couple outside for um, perspective. Even if you've got this just sitting on a shelf, it would definitely be worth it. Let's have a look at the interior. It does have a plating texture. Jack's got some nice detail on it. I can't give you a comment on the racking because I've never seen the interior. Looks to me like I've already lost a spade, but that's okay. I've got plenty of spades in my spares box. So this kit, yeah, I did get it off the internet was cheaper than normal retail so it has been around for a little while but nothing is irreparable okay some nice detail on the engine deck and yes having the grills to go on those open vents will definitely be a bonus as it has no engine there's not much to see okay so that's the second biggest sprue
Next up. Two sprues exactly the same. Okay, so these are your, as you can tell, wheels. Just like a Tiger. Really nice bolt detail. Really clean. Okay, so really good as far as the detail is concerned. Even down to the smaller bolts and things. And with a proper wash, they'll come up really nice. Okay, so the wheels are looking really good. And they're probably one of the most prominent parts, apart from the gun on a Stone Tiger. Right, and the only thing left to show you is, pardon the aircraft flying over, three sprues, individual track links. So let's get rid of two of them. There we go. So no, these do not click together. They glue together. So the detail on them, though, it's quite nice even to the track guides but you'll just have to be careful lining them up to make sure they're nice and straight before you put them on the tank okay and that guys is all the rest to it Not a huge number of parts, okay, but it will build into a very impressive model. I've always been impressed with Sturm Tigers, which is probably why I bought this in the first place, and I'm actually looking forward to building this one. Anyway, as usual, I hope you got something from this one. And uh, until next time, take it easy. I'll see you later.